Life is messy, and my life is no exception. This 100-year-old little farmhouse is well-lived in and well-loved. It is not picture-perfect, but it's comfortable. On any given day, you will find cobwebs in my windows and in the corners of this old house. And hey, I don't need to decorate for Halloween. I've got that covered. And there will always be some sort of crumbs on my floor. But I'm a mother of four kids, and I am passionate about bringing back tried and true homemaking skills that have maybe been forgotten. So to celebrate the changing seasons, I want to take you through some of the traditional ways that I make my home comfortable, especially now that cooler weather is coming. We like to feel a little bit more cozy, a little bit more comfortable, put on those warm fuzzy sweaters, bring out the warm blankets, and get that wood burning stove fire going. The mornings have been cold and crisp and the afternoons bright and sunny and this is my favorite time of year. Jared has been preparing the firewood on the weekends, chopping wood, stacking it up. And I love starting the morning out with a hot breakfast. Our wood burning stove is in our dining room and we love to sit by the stove while we're eating. In fact, it is the most popular and favorite seat around the table is right next to a fire, warming up those cold toesies. And the boys even cooked some sausages on the fire this morning. I'm constantly reminding myself that the feeling in your home is much more important than how clean your home is. But that being said, I do love a clean and good smelling kitchen. And so I've prepared a fall scented natural cleaner. I showed you guys how I made this a couple of videos ago, but this is made with vinegar, cloves, cinnamon, some orange peels, and it's been sitting here on the counter for a couple weeks and it's ready to be used. If you are willing to jump on the pumpkin spice bandwagon, then go ahead and pick up some cleaner that brings all of those good smells that fall has, or maybe you wanna try your hand at making your own cleaner. I love to bring in all of those delicious spices and smells during this time of year. I realized that this poor mason jar had a crack in the bottom of it and that's why I flipped it over and I'm still using it because I still have cleaner in there. Another wonderful way to get your kitchen and your home smelling so delicious and like all of the yummy spices of fall is to either make your own potpourri or to make some delicious pie filling on the stove or maybe even some apple butter. Today I have a lot of pears that need to be worked through. So I'm going to be making some pie filling here on the stove and put it all in the freezer so that we can pull it out and make cobbler and pear crisps and pear pies all throughout winter. In fact, we had some visitors stop by this day and the first thing she said when she walked into my house was, oh, it smells like somebody has been baking. I don't think there is a better smell that you can have in your home that is more inviting than the smell of somebody baking in the kitchen. Another place that really needs some comfort is the master bedroom. I don't know why it is that we always seem to put our own bedrooms last on the list when we're moving in, but that seems to be the case for us.
Jared bought me this rocking chair so I'd have some place to nurse the baby. And I am so happy for it. Don't you think it looks great in this room? Apparently we are still moving in because we have not even put up art or pictures on the walls of our bedroom. And I'm finally getting around to hanging up this art that I've been storing away for quite a while. This art is watercolors of cities that we have visited in Europe. Jared and I went on a trip to the Mediterranean area when we were first married and I treasure those memories so much. I can't believe what a difference it has made for me just having some meaningful art and beautiful pictures up on the walls in my bedroom. It makes me feel so much more at home. I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. Sometimes it's just the smallest things that only take a few minutes that make the biggest difference in the way that a room feels. You recall when we were young, running from all things at once, without thinking twice. And I knew we would catch up, and that we would be the ones left behind. The stories I've been told. They never seem to leave my mind Ooh, On this road that I am on I gotta stay here for Another some place that time. has received the homemaker's touch is our bedding, which is probably the most important piece of the master bedroom. I'll have to be quiet because Evie's sleeping in here. But I wanted to share with you guys one of the most important things that we've done to really make ourselves more comfortable and really invest more into, into my comfort. When I was looking into buying sheets, I was looking on Pinterest and online for linen sheets. I just love the look, the natural organic look of linen sheets. They are naturally kind of wrinkly. They have a natural fiber look through them. You can see the threads. And I personally love that look. I have spent a lot of money on really cheap sheets that I thought I was buying at a good quality and they just weren't. You know, the kind that ball up at the foot of the bed after you've washed them. Well, with these Brook Linen Luxury Sheets, that's not the case. In fact, they get softer with every single wash. The first night that we woke up after having these sheets on, Jared said, oh my gosh, I I think I slept so much better. And I said, really? Just because of these sheets? And he said, yes. It felt like I was snuggled up in these sheets and they actually are making a difference with, with how we're sleeping at night. Another reason why I decided to go with 100% linen is because it's so breathable. And no matter what time of year it is, these sheets will allow you to breathe, especially if you are in a place that is quite humid. So when you go online to buy your Brooklyn and sheets, you get to mix and match lots of different patterns. I chose to go with this olive fine pinstripe for the duvet cover, and I went with a natural, I think it's called khaki color on the sheets, and the sheets come with two shams as well, and then you also get a bonus pair of shams when you get the bundle, and I went with this olive color to match the olive pinstripes on my duvet. I would really strongly suggest just buying a bundle it saves you 25% and you still get to mix and match all of your pieces as well that are not only a, a natural fiber but they've been certified, tested and certified um, and proven that they are chemical free sheets. And when you're spending about one third of your life in sheets, sleeping in sheets, um, it's nice that you're not spending them in, in chemical or plastic fabrics. 
I'm so excited to tell you that Brooklinen is actually giving Jenna Lee's viewers $20 off of $100 when you use my link. I'm going to put that down in the description box below, so make sure to follow my link over to Brooklinen's. This is the time of year to pull out the books, make some time for a book that you've been wanting to read, maybe rent one from the library. I love reading home books and magazines. I love reading recipe books. The kids and I have been enjoying a couple of books lately as well. We've been reading The Little House on the Prairie and the first of the Chronicles of Narnia. I also love displaying books around my house. I think it really gives a cozy, comfortable feeling to the home and really invites your family, in this case, my children, to see books, to be able to get their hands on books and have them readily available. There actually is so much power in the subconscious and what you put in your home, what you decorate with, and what you see every day. These are the last of the pumpkins that we've collected from our secret pumpkin patch. And so I am going to be decorating with these and cooking up a lot of these as well. I love decorating with natural elements, as you probably have guessed by now. I like to decorate for fall. I like to bring in all these warm colors. I think it really sets the mood and just makes you feel cozy and comfortable. Most of these things here have been thrifted, I've collected over the years, and I'm just using some leaves, some pumpkins, some old antique books I've thrifted. These wooden ducks are so beautiful. Making a home feel comfortable and cozy doesn't have to be expensive. It just has to be with things that you love and intentional. Jared's bringing in the very last of the garden, some kale and bok choy and tomatoes. And I'm gonna be so sad to see the garden vegetables go. But come this time of year, we make a lot of soup. You can always smell a pot of simmering soup on the stove around dinner time. And tonight I just made a creamy vegetable soup. If you want to make an evening with the family feel really cozy, let them eat around candlelight. My kids think it's so fun to turn the lights off and to have an old fashioned dinner around the candlelight. I'm sure you've all been wondering, when is this girl going to bake something? <laughs> you always have to be baking when it's fall. Well, it's a good time to pull out your sourdough starter or maybe even start one. This is mine sitting on the counter. I do bake bread every single week, but today I wanted to make something a little bit different. I'm going to be making some 
apple butter hand pies. My kids liked calling them Pop-Tarts. So I whipped up some apple butter. I had a whole bushel of apples that needed to be used. We ended up spreading some of this applesauce on our waffles for breakfast, and I just let it simmer there on the stove until it turned into apple butter and added all sorts of delicious spices. I was thinking it'd be so wise to pre-make some pie crust and put that in the freezer so that we could use it all during the fall for pies. But if you don't have any pie crust on hand, of course, you could just get some from the grocery store, keep that in the freezer or the fridge, and whip it out every time you want to make a pie, make little hand pies, just so you have something easy to whip up and bake during this season. I have mentioned before that my mom makes a lot of pies. She made a lot of pies growing up, and she would always take her extra pie crust scraps, put them on a cookie sheet, and sprinkle them with sugar and cinnamon, and bake them in the oven. We would come by and snack on them while we were waiting for the pie, and it just reminds me of home. I think the key to hand pies is just adding the right amount of filling, not too much so it doesn't come pouring out the sides, and then pinching down those sides like a tight little dish. Baking is such a creative outlet for me. Does anyone feel like baking is therapeutic? <laughs> I absolutely enjoy the whole process. Press the like button, leave me a comment down below. What do you love baking? What do you love baking in the fall or for the holidays? I would love to know. I've given my little hand pies a little egg wash so that they would have a nice golden sheen on them and given them a little slit in the center to let some of that air out and I'm sprinkling them with some coarse raw cane sugar. And they look so sparkly and pretty. And into the oven they go at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes, but I would keep an eye on yours. My oven tends to cook a little bit cooler. Once the cool, crisp air comes, my kids are asking me every day for hot cocoa, which I don't really think we need hot cocoa every day, but it sparked the idea of having a little hot cocoa basket, a little corner of the kitchen that has some yummy hot drinks ready to go. So I picked up these mason jars. They have these really great lids that pop on and off of them at a thrift store this weekend. And so I'm filling one of them up with marshmallows. I know, putting marshmallows on your counters with kids in the house is dangerous. So this is my cautionary for you moms. I'm warning you right now. You might not want to put marshmallows on your counter. And for the second jar, I, we are going to make our own hot cocoa mix. Now, with this mix, you are going to put it straight into hot milk. So I'm just using powdered sugar and some cocoa powder. And I saw on Pinterest the other day, a recipe for a pumpkin spice hot chocolate. So I am going to add some of those flavors into this hot chocolate. There's gonna be cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg, ginger, and a little bit of turmeric, I think for the coloring, but I will try to post that recipe if I can find it down below. Just so you know, I had to add a bit more powdered sugar to this mix. I'm sure you were thinking, that is a lot of cocoa, lady. <laughs> well, it was. And if you like it that chocolatey, then so be it. 
The nice thing about mixing your own is that you can control <laughs> the amount of chocolate, which I prefer mine very chocolatey. If you have some powdered milk, you could also add that to your mix and instead of using fresh milk. I'm also going to add our little honey bear in here and put a basket of herbal teas out. I prefer to have an herbal tea in the evenings as well. So now we just have this cozy little nook for those warm, hot drinks. And if you really wanna go over the top, add a cookie jar to your little nook. I'm adding our little hand pies. Oh my goodness, my daughter just loved the little hot chocolate station that we made. She is so excited about it. And if you are a grandma, I'm telling you, this is something that I think you should definitely do. Your grandkids are just going to think you are the best grandma in the whole world. And if you haven't already, please press the subscribe button so that you know when I upload a new video each week. And remember that it's not about how perfect or tidy your house is. It's about the way your house feels. It's about bringing comfort and joy to all of the special people who live in it. Make sure to check out my Brooklinen link down in the description box below. And thanks Brooklinen for sponsoring this video. This has been the best birthday present ever. Let's chat down in the comments below. Let me know what you are baking up this season, what you're up to, and I'll talk to you next time. Love you lots.